All right, so here is this computer, and yes, you can see me here, so hello to you. It is running, of course, Windows XP Professional, and it has a pretty decent little screen here, but uh, I just wanted to show you the specs of this before I even do anything. So um, it is running Windows XP, as you can see here. Uh, now what I did, uh, what I ended up doing with this is, let me go to the system to show you that. It's like trying to remember where things are. Okay, so we've got uh, XP Professional 2002, Service Pack 3, and this is running a Pentium 4 at 3.40 gigahertz, uh, 2.24 gigs of RAM, and let me just tell you about that. So this computer actually had only 256 megabytes of RAM in it, and it ran like trash. This computer here, um, it had 1.5 gigs, or 1.5 something i don't know uh i took most of it out of this because the hard drive in this one was like messing up it was uh giving me smart uh disk issues so i put all the ram in here and it runs really nice so what i want to try today i want to try out zorin os Lite on this computer now this computer is from 2005 so it is 15 years old and that is what they say on their website, that it can work on computers up to 15 years old. Now, Windows XP is end of life, no longer supported. Windows 7 is now end of life, no longer supported. And this thing probably couldn't run Windows 10 very well. Um, haven't even considered trying it, but this is not my computer, it's a work computer. So basically what I'm going to do is I want to use the live CD part of this uh, USB. And I just want to see how the performance is and how it uh, handles it. So, as I showed you the specs before, so Pentium 4, 2.24 gigs of RAM. Let me go ahead and start up with the uh, Zorin OS. I got a, a BIOS update, so now it actually will work. So now we can test out Zorin OS here on this old computer. I can hear the fan spinning up a little bit. It's not really enjoying this. But what I want to see is, uh, can you can you use this for basic tasks? Um, now, mind you, this is not on the hard drive. It's running from a USB. Uh, so hopefully, kind of get an idea of how it's going to run from here. So we're at our desktop here. Looks pretty nice. So on the desktop here, we have our uh, Zorn OS Lite. So that's our USB, as you can see. Our hard drive that's in the actual computer. You are now offline. Okay. And then we have our installs or an OS if we want to install it. Uh, so down here, down here we have our Firefox browser. You can go through your uh, file manager here, and then you have your software store. We have our start menu here, or our <laughs> Zorin menu. And down here in the taskbar, we have uh, notifications. So you can click that, and there we go. So you have notifications here. You can turn on Do Not Disturb. This is going to be your network here. So. We are on a wired connection, but if you have Wi-Fi, it would show up here. Down here, we have uh, presentation mode and power manager settings. Here we have sound. And you also, you also have an audio player here. You also have a little, little calendar here, so this is still pretty similar. Yeah, so it's telling me that it's offline, so that's interesting. Let's see if we can actually get that to work here. All right, so I just clicked Firefox. So let's see how long that takes to actually show up here. All right, so it's not terrible. All right, so uh, in the window here, we do have a minimize, our maximize button, and then we have our X. Yeah, so it's not, I don't think it's gonna actually work. Google, let's see. No, all right, so the internet's not working on here, so that's kind of interesting. I'm not sure why, but uh, let's go ahead and check to see if anything else works here. So in, in the uh, little start menu here, we do have a very familiar Windows 7-ish look. You have your user, inform your user account right here. You have your home folder, documents folder, downloads folder, music folder, pictures folder, videos folder, a software button here, settings. Okay, now it's telling me that the connection has been established. 
All right, so we'll try the internet again. All right, so we do have internet now, so I will show you, um, but first I'll show you some of the applications that are included um, on this. So we have under accessories, we have an archive manager, calculator, catfish file search, uh, characters, clocks, file manager, uh, screenshot, terminal emulator, text editor, and XF burn. Under games, we have a couple things here. So we do have solitaire, mahjong, mines, uh, quadrupostle. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, it looks kind of like Tetris. Uh, Sudoku. Uh, graphics, we have a couple different things here. So we have a document viewer. We have a uh, image manipulation um, program. We have uh, LibreOffice Draw. We have an image viewer and a simple scan. And under internet, we have the Firefox web browser. Uh, we have an RSS feed thing here. So uh, actually, no, connect to remote desktops. Okay, it looks like an RSS feed thing, but it's not. Uh, Thunderbird email, so that's an email client there. Multimedia, you have cheese. So this would be, I assume, for a webcam. Take photos, videos with your webcam. Uh, parole media player, so you can play your media. Uh, create and edit your own movies. That's kind of cool. So you can actually edit videos on this. Uh, your audio, uh, audio volume control, and then the XF burn is in this section also. Under Office, we have a couple different things here. So we have a document viewer, which is in the other, the other menu also. We have LibreOffice, uh, which will bring up the whole suite so you can pick from different things there. You have your base, calculator, uh, draw, impress, and, and writer. So this is basically Word, and this is a um, PowerPoint. Alternative, this is draw, this is Excel basically, and this I believe is access. So if we just click on one of those, and it starts pretty quick, it's not, not too bad. I mean, this is an old, old computer. Like I said, it's 15 years old. I spoke too soon. That's gonna take a little bit. So. Okay. You know, running this for the first time. Yeah, so it looks really nice actually. And you got a couple different options here. So we'll just go ahead and close this out. Don't save. All right, so the one thing I really am curious about is how does it handle internet? How does it handle modern internet tasks? So one of the biggest things I wanna check is, well, let's see, it's starting up at zornos.com slash start. So let's see how that goes. Oh, wow, this huge, search thing okay let's search for youtube how about that oh we actually have a nice little button for it that's cool all right so let's go ahead and go to youtube and we're just going to watch any video that comes up i just want to see how well it handles it So it's definitely a little bit slow here. All right, so let's go to this odd tinkering uh, video here. Okay, we're gonna get a nice little ad. So the video is running. It's running okay. I doubt it's going to work in HD. Well, apparently it's in HD. So 720p, not too bad. It's a little stuttery and I can hear the computer kind of running a little bit rough. Now this is with just default drivers that are with the Zorin OS. So um, I think that it would probably do just fine if it was um, running better drivers. Yeah, that ran a little bit rough there. <laughs> All right, so let's go over a couple other settings here and uh, see what else we can change on this. See what options we have when we right click here. So we can open in a new window, create a launcher, create a URL link, create a folder, create a document. You have all the options for your uh, LibreOffice here. Open a terminal, find in this folder, arrange desktop icons, desktop settings. Let's see what our desktop settings are. And... All right, so we have our background that we can change here. 
looks like we have quite a few wow okay <laughs> quite a few different options here let's so got a nice little beach here looks like the roman coliseum oh it does have a name of it all right got a little sandbar here another ocean one here so that's pretty nice you have style zoomed so you can have uh, centered tiled stretched scaled zoomed so we can just do stretched if we want to do that and then uh, here's your folder here and you can add your own folder you can also change the background every 10 minutes that's kind of cool so we'll do that um okay specify the specify the style of the color drawn behind the background image Oh, that's cool. Okay, so you have a couple different options. Uh, let's see, our menus uh, include applications menu on desktop, right click, uh, show application icons. All right, we'll show window list. All right, so there's some other options here. And we have our icons here, icon type, file launcher, icon size, where they are, top left vertical, show icons on primary display, use custom font size. Okay, and you can even go in here so just like Windows, you can actually put the computer on the desktop and the trash and all that. So we can put our trash here. And then if you want to have a home folder right there, and as you can see, they popped up right there. So that's pretty cool. And then you have your removal de removal device. Can't even say it. Removable devices right there. All right. So here's our change here. All right, now if we hit properties here, what will we get? Uh, desktop properties, so you'll see the amount of space it's using. Okay, emblems, that's kind of interesting. So I guess, the, are these the icons? I can't really tell. All right, and you have your permissions here. All right, let's go into our uh, software. Well, let's see, system. Okay, under the system, we have a disk usage analyzer, Gparted, which is for partitioning and organizing, uh, your, das your task manager, and that's your file manager here. Under settings, all right, so we have an about me, accessibility, additional drivers, appearance, uh, Bluetooth adapters, Bluetooth manager, boot repair, color profiles, desktop. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Quite a bit. So we have our Zorn, ex our Zorn appearance. Let's see what we can do here. It could be the same thing. Oh, okay, so we have this kind of layout here, and then we have, as you can see, it has just the little squares here. So just like that. So with this, it changes it a little bit. Let's see, where's our little start menu here? So then it only shows the ones that are open here. So if we want to do this, then it brings back those little shortcuts. So that's pretty nice. And then you have your title bar buttons that can be left or right justified. Uh, we do have some themes here. That's kind of cool. So we have accent color, so you can change that. Um, it does have a light and dark mode, so you can have it automatically change, or you can just have it as dark. And you have some options as far as like when it changes to light and when it changes to dark. And as you can see, it's running. Oh, it's a little sluggish. It's not terrible, but yeah. All right, we do have a bunch of fonts here, so you can choose the size, the type, and for these different things here. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's see what else we have here. Um, all right, so we have, an, uh, we have a software updater, so you can update your software. Uh, software and updates for the system itself. If that even comes up. <laughs> oh, there it goes. All right, so downloadable from the internet, cano uh, uh, canonical, supported free and open source software, community maintained free and open source software, proprietary drivers for devices, uh, software restricted by copyright or legal issues. Yeah, and you can uh, check out other software here. Oh, wow, okay. Quite a bit of options here for different packages you can use. Uh, updates here authentication, additional drivers. So this is kind of cool. This will search for drivers that um, it may not be using right away. So let's see if it pops up with anything. And we have no additional drivers available. So it's using the current ones. So you have developer options. Oh, that's kind of cool. So you can actually beta uh, updates for the system itself. And let's see what other settings do we have here. Oh, okay. So 
those settings that were listed are actually all listed in this little control panel kind of thing here. So we got settings editor. Oh, that's kind of cool. So you can rearrange things, boot repair, firewall configuration, all that good stuff. All right, so we have about me, appearance, desktop, screen savers, window tweak manager. Wow, lots of good stuff here, lots of good stuff. So what's great about this is it's a lightweight version of Zorn OS. It's running on XFCE, so very light and shouldn't cause your computer to have a heart attack. And um, it's still supported, which is nice. So it's, it's fresh, it's new. So as I said before, XP is no longer supported. 7 is no longer supported. This computer probably wouldn't be able to hold a handle um, Windows 10 very well. So if you have something that's really old like this, 15 years old, probably even older, it probably could give it you know new life. Um, apparently you can run on as low as 256 megabytes of RAM, although I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, but yeah, if you absolutely need to have, you have an old computer you wanna try this out on, I say try it. Um, like I said, USB, just plug the USB in there, you can try it, and then when you're ready to install it, you can just install it. And uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Just a quick look at Zorin OS Lite on an actual old computer because I didn't want to try it on a newer computer because I knew it would run really, really well. And this one is old as dirt. <laughs> so I wanted to see if it actually would run fine. And it does. So it runs pretty good. You have a supported version, a supported operating system, even though this thing couldn't handle anything newer. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, leave me a like. If you want to see more like this, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video.